Uh, Bill is all running for Congress on the 19th. Uh, I should say, uh, as full disclosure, Congressman Class was also invited, uh, uh, but I didn't get a response to his uh, campaign. So we're happy to have you. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I was here twice uh, in my previous campaign. I uh, spoke to a group uh, in this room, and I also uh, uh, attended the Corn Roast, that, uh, corn roast in August. Uh, the worst thing that happened to me at that Corn Roast, besides my little trip, uh, was the fact that en route to it, I remembered, what time did that start? 3.30 or 4 o'clock? Like yeah, 6 o'clock. Oh, it was a little earlier, I think, that day. Uh, it was an afternoon. It was my wife's birthday, <laughs> and here I am. What am I doing out here? With no gift, nothing. And I managed to salvage that with a phone call to uh, uh, Lincoln Way, Florist. And they, uh, actually, uh, I must have gotten the flowers before I came out. That's what it was, because the florist was here too. That was interesting. The woman who actually made the, the, the well, it's a great. It's great to be here uh, with uh, labor folks. Uh, my name is Phil Abillo. I'm a combat wounded Marine Corps veteran, and I'm running for the Congress of the United States. Uh, Clark stole a little bit of my thunder, but I have to say that uh, I'm both of those people he mentioned. I'm a senior citizen, and I'm disabled. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that puts me into this category where Social Security is quite significant. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a system that has provided the most perfect form of security for working class people in my lifetime. It didn't exist prior to this 73 years ago. And it's been a godsend for anybody who's ever had the opportunity to take it. Uh, Clark took another piece of my, my, my another part of my uh, comments here, but he said, McCain is uh, not someone who's affected by Social Security. Well, my thought earlier was that, isn't it amazing how the people who attack Social Security want to transform it, President Bush, congressmen and senators, uh, business leaders, anyone else you want to name, don't have a stake in it. You know, if they lose a few dollars, it's not going to really make too much difference. They, the, the Social Security, uh, what does, what does uh, $15,000 or $12,000 a year mean to George Bush or John McCain, Congressman Todd Platts, you know, anybody like that, what does it mean uh, for them? Virtually, uh, virtually nothing by the time they reach but for working class people, people who go to work every morning, work on an hourly wage, uh, for them it's, it's, it's critical that they have it. And without it, uh, their, their retirement is going to suffer and to, and to uh, generate a lifetime in which they are lack the dignity of all the work they've done. Now, I think one of the things that labor has done over the centuries, since it's really got organized in the 19th century, is make all work meaningful. You know, it's given meaning and value to all work. In this country, we still like to discriminate about the, you know, uh, we call it uh, uh, scut work or lousy work. Uh, but all work is meaningful. It doesn't matter what you do. Uh, if you clean the toilets or if you, uh, if you uh, uh, work at the most precision factory in the country, all work is meaningful and it's all necessary for us. And so what's the reward for that? It's Social Security. Look at all the misinformation about Social Security. I was on the McCain... Uh, <clears throat> Nothing that can. I was on some paper, paper, paper website recently, uh, which wants to privatize Social Security, and it said the transition between income and uh, output is going to take place in the next five years or so. Well, that may be true, but the reality is that the Social Security system has a huge surplus, which is going to carry us to the year 2046 or 47 before we reach the point where it can't fund existing uh, retirees. The way, the way it is right now. And even then, even then it will still be able to sustain without any changes, probably 70 to 75 percent of all benefits. So as Eugene said earlier, and let me tell you, I don't know how many of you live in, the, in his, his uh, legislative district, but I've never seen a legislator like Eugene D. Pasquale, and this guy is magnificent. We are so privileged to have him. I can't vote for him. I hope that any of you can make sure you get out there and, and, and pound the bushes for him. And Daryl also, and the southern part of the county here, uh, needs your help. But coming back to this idea of, uh, uh, of, of the money, where's the money? The, the money's there. I mean, they, they're just playing smoke and mirrors on this issue of whether or not we can fund Social Security. It can be funded. 
And what has to be done with that is, uh, Eugene suggests, and everybody who's involved in this, that we have to tinker with it. We have to figure out a way to increase the revenue stream somewhat. And if that means raising the uh, raising the cap loan, well, uh, let's do that. Let's just raise that cap. It probably wouldn't take very much uh, to bring that about. Uh, there's another element here that uh, seems to me is very important. Uh, my opponent in 2005 voted for the Alliance of Retired Americans, supported their proposals about 30% of the time. That was 2004, pardon me. In 2005, it was 10%. 10% of the votes that this group here that's sponsoring this today supported, he supported 10% of the time. In 2006, he supported 10% of the Alliance for Retired Americans. We ran put a little scare into him in 2006. And last year, 50% of the Alliance for American Americans received his support. Yeah, he, <laughs> that was earth shattering, I know. <laughs> it's probably gonna get a lightning strike here. Uh, the, the point is that he's recognized and understands clearly uh, that the, the people of this community are ready for a change. They're ready for something dramatic and important to happen. And we have this absolutely incredible opportunity in the year 2008 to transform this country, to bring dignity back to labor, to give working people the chances and the opportunities they want, to make sure their children have the chances and opportunities we have, which is disappearing, to make sure people can get college educations. I mean, consider what the choices are for us. I mean, if we don't do something in November, it's not only Social Security that's an issue. Now, my opponent, has voted prior to 2007, virtually every year in the Congress, 0% of the time with the disabled American veterans. Here's a guy who puts his arm around every person in uniform he can find, has his picture taken with him, flies to Iraq and Afghanistan every single chance he gets, and he won't vote with the DAV, the disabled American veterans. I'm a life member of that group. That's outrageous. Suddenly, there's a clip. Suddenly, there's a little bit more support this year. We've got him on the run. We can do this this year. Put Obama in the White House, put a bill on the Congress, get, get Darrell elected. Eugene has to be reelected. We've got people running from other state offices. We're all on the same page when it comes to this stuff social security, energy, education, health care, Medicare, whatever it is you can think of. We're a team, and we're going to make this happen. Okay? But we can't do it without the support in this room. I know it's a small group, but revolutions have started with more. Uh, fewer, I mean. You don't need many. You just need uh, people who believe, are committed, and firmly uh, determined to bring about the changes that they want to bring about. And I'll tell you one thing. I've never been so proud of being uh, your county, of being a Democrat, uh, of being an American as I am right now to see how we can transform this county the state, this nation, and put the United States back where it belongs in the world community as the beacon of liberty, hope, and freedom. Thank you very much.